Okay. Good morning, everyone. So, uh, we were looking into the um, uh, limitation of the film theory, that is the one dimensional model. Then we shifted to two dimensional model in order to uh, uh, to overcome the short shortcoming that is the mass transfer boundary layer is still developing. Then we try to we go, we go on uh, solving the governing equation to get the cross flow ultra filtration system when the mass transfer boundary layer is still developing. So, what we have done we wrote down the governing equation we wrote down the velocity, it is basically a governing equation coupled with the velocity field as well as the concentration field for the solute. Now, this governing equation is nothing but a parabolic partial differential equations and uh, we require to have three boundary conditions to solve this equation. Now, out of these three boundary conditions, we have seen that uh, one of the boundary condition is residing at infinity. That makes it, uh, you know, there is a thumb rule that if a partial differential equation is parabolic, and one of the boundary condition is residing at infinity, one can expect a similarity solution. Okay. So, we have to identify the similarity variable. What is the advantage of getting a similarity solution? The advantage is if you have a similarity solution, then a partial differential equation will be reduced to a to an ordinary differential equation and the solution of ordinary differential equation is always easier. So, we were in search of getting the similarity variable or combined variable. So, what we in similarity variable, what uh, in just in a nutshell, I will just give the idea. In similarity variable, suppose there are more than one variable in a partial differential equation, let us say two variable, then two vari independent variables, these two independent variables will be combined in a single variable. Okay? And all the derivatives are now expressed in terms of single variable that makes the reduction of partial differential equation into an ordinary differential equation. Now, let us look into the, uh, the estimation of similarity variable. It is called similarity variable or similarity parameter or combined parameter. And uh, what you have to do, first we write down the equation of motion, uh, the solute balance equation. The solute, if you remember the solute balance equation, we have written 3 u naught y by h del c del x minus j del c del y is equal to d del square c del y square. Now, since it is a governing equation, it must be valid on the boundary conditions also. So, we evaluate this equation at the edge of mass transfer boundary layer. If you do so, now, uh, since it is a boundary layer, we all know that in a boundary on a boundary layer, the derivative of the dependent variable will be equal to with respect to y or the normal variable will be equal to 0. That means, c is equal to c naught or c bulk and del c del y will be equal to 0 at y is equal to delta that is the, at the edge of the boundary layer. So, therefore, this equation at the edge of the boundary layer now becomes 3 u 0 y by h minus del c del x, the second term will vanish and the, the, the term on the right hand side that will remain there. Okay. Now, you do an order of magnitude analysis, we do an order of magnitude analysis now in this order of magnitude analysis what we do? We put the value of delta in terms of differences okay? and, and y will be delta 3 u 0 delta by h and delta c will nothing but a change in concentration and delta x will be nothing but a delta x, x minus 0. Right? We, we, we assume a small distance from the channel entrance. So, it will be x minus 0 that will be 0 is equal to d and del square c, if you are familiar with the numerical differentiation, it is nothing but a sort of delta c, change in concentration. It will be delta c and del y square will be nothing but delta minus 0 whole square. So, it will be delta minus 0 whole square approximately. Okay. So, now you can simplify this equation and see what you get. If you simplify this equation, you will be getting this 
3 u 0 delta by h okay. Now, delta c will be cancelled from both the sides it will be 1 over x will be roughly equal to d delta c will be cancelled and it will be delta square. So, you will be getting an estimate that delta cube will be nothing but h d by 3 u 0 x okay. and delta will be nothing but h d over 3 u naught x raised to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. Now, the similarity parameter or combined variable parameter similarity parameter is uh, defined as eta is equal to y by delta and why it is y by delta I just gave a you know uh, uh, a picture in the last class if you express y by delta then all the concentration profiles at different locations will will superimpose on a single curve that means the variation the independent variation in two variables will be uh, combined or will be cast on a single variable so so now the similarity parameter now you put the expression of delta this becomes y divided by h d 3 u 0 x raised to the 1 upon 3 or it will be nothing but u 0 h d raised to the power 1 upon 3 y over x to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. So, the variation of y e of eta or the similarity parameter in terms of the independent variable y and x will be in the form of y divided by x to the power 1 upon 3. So, that is the variation that is the that is the functional variation or combination of the independent variables to formulate the, the, the definition of combined parameter or similarity parameter eta. Now, the most interesting thing is that if you look into the dimension of eta it turns out to be a dimen dimensionless number okay so what is the let us let us have a di dimensional check now what is the dimension of u naught it is meter per second what is h h is nothing but in meter or is diffusivity meter square per second right raised to the power 1 upon 3 and okay we do a non dimensional analysis and y is in meter and this is meter to the power 1 upon 3 so, second second will be cancelling out. So, meter meter will be cancelling out. So, you will be getting meter in the denominator meter to the power one, 2 by 3, meter to the power 1 upon 3, this will be nothing but meter. So, meter meter will be cancelling out and you will be having a dimensionless number. So, the similarity parameter eta will be nothing but a dimensionless number where u 0 h d all are taken as constant and actual variation of eta with respect to independent variables y and x will be in the form of y x to the power divided by x to the power 1 upon 3. Thus, we identify the similarity parameter. So, what we will do next? We will do uh, we express all the uh, partial derivative of the governing equation in terms of eta. Okay. So, we carry out the partial derivative let us say del c del x, del c del x will be nothing but del c del eta del eta del x and since now we are saying that eta takes care of it now there is only one parameter eta it is a combined variable combined parameter. So, this del c del x the del c del eta will be a total derivative d c d eta. On the other hand, del eta del x will be having some term. This turns out to be minus 1 upon 3 u 0 h by d raised to the power 1 upon 3 y x to the power 1 upon 3 multiplied by x. So, there will be x to the power 4 by 3 in the denominator and this turns out to be minus eta by 3 x d c d eta. Okay. So, this whole thing u 0 rest u 0 by h d raised to the power 1 upon 3 y by x to the power 1 upon 3 this whole thing is eta. If you if you look into the definition of eta this whole thing becomes eta. So, I replace this by eta and x will be there in the denominator and you will be having minus eta by 3 x d c d eta. Now, similarly you do the other you express the other derivatives in terms of eta if you do that the rest are very simple del c del y will be nothing but d c d eta and del eta del y. If you look into the definition of eta del, del, del eta del y becomes u 0 h d raised to the power 1 upon 3 
divided by x to the power 1 upon 3 dc d eta. Okay. Now, if you take and so that is how del c del eta is del c del y is, is written in terms of dc d eta and one more term on the right hand side is del square c del y square. In del square c del y square it is basically one more derivative of del c del y with respect to eta. So, del del y of del c del y. Okay. So, here also we will do del del eta of del c del y del eta del y and we already expressed del c del y in terms of d c d eta. So, therefore, this becomes d d eta u 0 h d raised to the power 1 upon 3 let us put another bracket there 1 by x to the power 1 upon 3 d c d eta and del eta del y is nothing but u 0 h d raised to the power 1 upon 3 y over x to the power uh, this y will not be there del c del eta del y. So, it will be 1 x to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. So, now if you uh, carry out this differentiation with respect to eta, so all these all these terms will be taken as constant. So, it becomes d square c d eta square. Okay. So, I will be omitting couple of steps for simplification. You please go ahead with the all steps when you go back to your hostel and carry out this uh, you know um, uh, um, uh, these derivations and the final form of del square c del y square becomes del square c del y square now becomes u 0 by h d raised to the power 2 by 3 1 over x to the power 2 by 3 d square c d eta square. Okay. Now, what we have done till now? we have expressed all the derivatives. So, let us look into the governing equation. The governing equation is now is 3 u 0 y by h del c del x minus j del c del y is equal to d del square c del y square. Now, what we have done? We expressed del c del x in terms of eta a combined variable since there is a single variable. So, the partial derivative becomes a total derivative. So, it becomes d c d eta. Now, this was also expressed in terms of d c d eta and this was expressed in terms of d square c d eta square. Okay. Now, we express all the partial derivative and substitute in the governing equation. If we do that, then and we do uh, we substitute the partial derivatives in governing equation and and simplify it okay so that i i can write a compact form and simplify uh, maybe a couple couple of steps and re, re rearrangement basically after rearrangement whatever you'll be getting is minus eta square minus j hx by u0 d square raised to the power 1 upon 3 d c d eta is equal to d square c d eta square. This will be the form of your partial differential equation uh, in terms of x and y it boils down an ordinary differential equation of order 2 with respect to eta although you have an independent variable x here. So, we cannot integrate it out in the present form for that you require to have some some more you know uh, you know uh, rearrangement or mathematical manipulation which will confirm the physical situation okay now let us see what physical situation will allow us to treat or handle this x containing term i think we have discussed several times that uh, the the concentration boundary layer when the concentration boundary layer thickness grows it offers an extra resistance against the solvent flux so therefore the thickness delta more be the thickness delta less will be the solvent flux or j so j will be inversely proportional to delta right more the thickness of mass transfer boundary layer less be the 
solvent flux because more will be the resistance against the solvent flux. Okay. So, that means what is thickness of mass transfer boundary layer? J delta and what is the solvent flux? J. So, J is inversely proportional to delta and if you remember that what is the expression of delta? Delta will be proportional to x to the power 1 upon 3 that we have already derived right. Delta is proportional to x to the power 1 upon 3 correct. So, therefore, j is inversely proportional to x to the power 1 upon 3 correct. So, j times x to the power 1 upon 3 will be a constant. That means, uh, in this expression in the in this expression j times x to the power 1 upon 3 will be a constant and what is the role of these terms h by u 0 d square they will be basically in some di dimensional number they will make whole this thing as non dimensional constant. Okay. So, therefore, what I can do I can write j times h x by u 0 d square raised to the power 1 upon 3 is a constant right because h is a is a is a geometrical parameter which is constant usually is an operating parameter cross flow velocity that is a constant d is a diffusivity is a solute property that is a constant so we can write j hx divided by u0 d square raised to the power 1.3 is a constant let's say that constant is a so under this situation what is our governing equation now boils to my governing equation now becomes d square c d eta square is equal to minus eta square minus a d c d eta. This is the form of governing equation. Now, in this equation let us see we have already shown earlier that eta is a non dimensional number and, and let us say what is, what is the uh, dimension of a because of the presence of this constants h u 0 and d square a will also become a non dimensional number. Let us let us check the dimensionality of a the a will be j will be will be having a unit of meter per second meter cube per meter square second. So, we will be having a unit of meter per second now h will be having a unit meter and x will be having a unit meter. So, it will be meter square in the numerator. So, meter square divided by u 0 will be having a unit meter per second and d square uh, and d will be having a unit meter square per second. So, it will be meter to the 4 per second square so, this is meter per second and meter to the 5 meter square. So, it will be meter cube in the, in the denominator and second cube in the numerator. So, s cube by meter cube raised to the 1 upon 3. So, it will be meter per second and this will be second per meter it will be cancelling out. So, a will be a unit free number a is an is a unit free number eta is a unit free number. So, and, and c is a dimensional number. So, let us make it unitless. So, we define a sister as c by c naught if you define a sister because the fit concentration is known to you if we define a system non dimensional concentration as c by c naught then express this equation uh, the replace c by c star and the whole equation become a non dimensional equation. Okay. So, let us do that and write everything in the non dimensional form. If you do that the non dimensional form of governing equation now becomes d square sister d eta square is equal to minus eta square minus a d sister d eta right. So, this becomes the whole equation becomes the non dimension now now you are you are in a position to integrate it out how to integrate this equation just assume d sister d eta is equal to let us say a variable z ok. So, so this becomes d z d eta is nothing but minus eta square plus a z. So, this becomes d z by z is equal to minus eta square plus a d eta. So, now just integrate it out uh, 
it, it becomes on one integration this becomes ln z right this becomes ln z so z is equal to k1 exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus a eta okay and what is dz d eta dz what is z z is nothing but d sister d eta so let us put one more integration carry out one more integration with respect to eta if you carry out one more integration the expression becomes sister a constant uh, k2 k k1 sorry k1 integration 0 to eta exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus a eta d eta plus another constant k2 this is constant of integration for the second row this becomes the concentration profile within the mass transfer boundary layer okay now in order to evaluate the uh, two constants k1 and k2 you must be requiring the boundary conditions boundary conditions uh, two boundary conditions on y and to evaluate the constants of integration k1 and k2 now we have two boundary conditions on y we express these two boundary conditions in terms of common variable eta so let us do that the boundary conditions at y is equal to infinity you had c is equal to c naught that means sister is equal to 1 sister equal to 1 and if you look into the definition of eta eta is equal to nothing but y by x to the power 1 upon 3 so y equal to infinity means eta equal to infinity so that means at eta equal to infinity sister is equal to 1 so this is the first boundary condition that we are going to use uh, to evaluate the integration constants k1 and k2 now at bounded the another boundary condition is at y equal to 0 uh, j c minus c p plus d del c del y will be equal to 0. Now, if you if you get the expression of del c del y let us let us let us look into that del c del y what is del c del y del c del y and y equal to 0 means eta equal to 0 right and del c del y if you remember del c del y will be nothing but u 0 divided by h d raised to the power 1 upon 3 over 1 by x to the power 1 upon 3 d c d eta right and at y is equal to 0 what is c c is nothing but c m that is at membrane surface because the your, your coordinate starts from membrane surface towards the bulk so you can write it as c m minus c p and what is c m minus c p in terms of real retention it is nothing but If you, if you look in if you if you just remember the definition of real retention 1 minus cp over cm so cm minus cp is nothing but cm times rr okay so just put it there so at w at y equal to 0 means at eta equal to 0 we had j times cm rr plus d times the whole thing right u0 divided by hd raised to the power 1 upon 3 1 over x to the power 1 upon 3 d c d eta is equal to 0. Now, d can be taken inside this bracket and it will becomes u 0 u 0 d square right d cube. So, it will be d square okay. j c m r r plus u 0 d square y h raised to x raised to the power 1 upon 3 d c d eta equal to 0. And uh, you just multiply it this becomes j h x by u 0 d square raised to the power 1 upon 3 c m r r plus d c d eta will be equal to 0 correct. Now, now we have already proved that j times h x u 0 d square raised to the power 1 upon 3 is the constant a we have identified that whole thing becomes a constant and that constant was a 
Okay. So, we just substitute that. So, this is nothing but the constant A that we have defined earlier. So, we substitute that and let us see what we get. So, we will be getting A times C m R r plus d c d eta equal to 0 right at 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 y equal to 0 means nothing but eta equal to 0 at eta equal to 0. Now, we we, we now a is a non dimensional number real attention is also a non dimensional number uh, eta is also non dimensional. So, we make c to be non dimensional by divided by c naught. So, this becomes a c m star r r plus d c star d eta equal to 0 that is the mixed boundary condition that is prevailing at eta equal to 0. Now, we will be using two boundary conditions this boundary condition and the other boundary condition that is at eta equal to infinity c star is equal to 1 in order to evaluate the two constants k 1 and k 2. So, we have two boundary conditions and we will be utilizing them. Now, let us use the two boundary conditions and uh, the let us write down the governing equation of sister. The governing equation of sister is nothing but k 1 0 to eta exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus a eta d eta plus k 2. Okay. The first boundary condition uh, uh, or that is uh, at eta equal to infinity sister is equal to 1. Okay. So, just put it that 1 k 1 now 0 to eta will now becomes 0 to infinity exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus a eta d eta plus k 2. Right. Now, let us look into this integral. This integral my eta is the dummy variable this integration is over eta and a is a constant. Okay. Now, what is 0 to infinity? 0 to infinity means it is a finite integral that means it will re knowing the value of a, but if you evaluate this integration you will be getting a number. It is a finite integral. So, let us call this finite integral as i and if you if you you can you can use any uh, any Simpson's rules or any you know trapezoidal rule to evaluate this integral and what is the value of infinity you will be taking numerically you will be taking let us say 10 okay let 10 11 12 something like that and just check if you take 10 and you uh, numerically if you get 1 and let us say in the next time you take 12 and say whether you are getting 1.2 or 1.01 if it is 1.01 10 is good enough as infinity if it is 1.2 then you have to go for the higher higher terms or the you have to you have to assign higher values to infinity okay that's how you have to do it numerically so one is equal to k1 i plus k2 where i is a definite integral so let's say this is equation number 1 and we use the other boundary condition that is d c star d eta is equal plus a c m star r r what is c m star c m star is nothing but c star evaluated at y equal to 0 and what is y equal to 0? y equal to 0 is nothing but eta equal to 0 and what is eta equal to 0? eta equal to 0 implies on this integral that means this integral is from 0 to 0. 0 to 0 means that integration will be will be vanished. So, there is no contribution from here. So, C m star is nothing but k 2 okay. at eta equal to 0 that is equivalent to y equal to 0 your C m star is nothing but k 2 okay. and what is d c star d eta for that you have to get the expression of z. The d c star d eta if you look into expression of d c star d eta this becomes k 1 exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus a eta. So, at eta equal to 0 what is the fate of d c star d eta this will be nothing but k 1 because exponential 0 exponential 0 is 1. So, let us put these expressions into the governing in the, in the boundary conditions at y equal to 0 that is a c m star at eta equal to 0 
A C M star, C M star means K 2 R R plus D C star D eta at eta equal to 0 that is nothing but K 1 will be equal to 0. So, this is equation number 2 and let us write down the first equation 1 is equal to K 1 I plus K 2 this is equation number 1. Now, now the just two equations and two unknowns k, k and k 1 and k 2 let us put k 1 is equal to minus a k 2 r r from the equation number 2 and substitute over here. So, what you get is minus a k 2 r r i plus k 2 from here you can estimate the value of k 2. So, k 2 will be nothing but 1 minus 1 minus a r r i. Okay. And what is k 1? k 1 is nothing but a r r k 1 will be a r r divided by 1 minus a r r i right. So, this will be true integration constant and what is i? i is nothing but the definite integral from 0 to infinity exponential whatever it is. Okay. So, you are, so now you can completely solve the concentration profile in terms of eta. Okay. Now, eta being a common variable that is uh, that is basically a functional variation of y by x to the power 1 upon 3. Now, you can fix the value of x and for different y you can carry out the concentration. So, you will be getting a concentration profile. Similarly, at a fixed value of y you can carry out the concentration at various x values. So, you will be getting the concentration profile along the x at a, at a, at a uh, particular value of y. So, likewise one can get the concentration profile, but that will not serve our purpose simply because we do not require the concentration profile in the mass transfer boundary layer. What we require? We require the value of the concentration of the membrane surface so that we can connect it to the transport phenomena laws which will be prevailing within the porous membrane and get the value of permeate concentration and permeate flux. Okay. Let us do that. Okay. Now, we have, we, we have the, um, uh, uh, if, if you remember the expression of A, the expression of A is nothing but j h x by u 0 d square raised to the power 1 upon 3. So, we can express j as A u 0 d square y h x raised to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. And we define now this thing is non dimensional, the whole thing is non dimensional, uh, this will be having a dimension. So, we express j or the solvent flux in its non dimensional form. What is the non-dimensional form? P w, this is basically the uh, Peclet wall, this is called Peclet number at wall or this is a non-dimensional permeate flux. We define P w as j d by d. What is d? d is the equivalent diameter. Okay. Since it is a rectangular channel, the diameter will be equivalent diameter and we have, we have derived earlier that since it is a thin rectangular channel, d will be roughly equal to 4 times half height. So, this will be nothing but 4 times half height. Okay. So, uh, let us, let us uh, look into the form of non-dimensional flux that will be P w is equal to j uh, d e by d. If you substitute that, what you will be getting is at uh, now, you express uh, j is equal to uh, d by d, uh, j is a times u 0 d square over h x raised to the power 1 upon 3. You, you express h 
as d e by 4. Okay. So, what you will be getting is that you will be getting 4 to the power 1 upon 3 times A times Reynolds Smith d e by L raised to the power 1 upon 3 x star to the power minus 1 upon 3. Again, I have omitted a couple of steps. Uh, what I have and what is Reynolds number? Reynolds nothing but rho u 0 d e by mu and Smith will be mu by rho d right? and Reynolds Smith d e by L will be what? rho u 0 d e by mu times mu by rho d times d e by L this mu mu will be cancelled, rho b will be cancelled. So, you will be getting u 0 d square by d L and what is x star? x star is nothing but x by L. So, if you now replace x by its non dimensional version that is x by L, then the whatever is there within the bracket that becomes Reynolds times Smith times d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3. In a sense, you will be having this as u 0 d square by d L. Okay. Once we identify that, then we are in a position, we are in a position that uh, a 1 will be can be expressed in terms of p w and other non dimensional variables. That means, a 1 will be nothing but p w divided by 4 to the power 1 upon 3 Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3 x star raised to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. That is the expression of A. Now, with this formulation and we have one more equation that is the osmotic pressure law, osmotic pressure equation or Darcy's law. for solvent flux through the porous membrane. What is that? V w is equal to, j, sorry, j is equal to L p del p minus del pi, but del pi is nothing but a function of concentration at the membrane surface. Now, we can make it non dimensional because everything is now non dimensional. So, we can express P w as j d by d. So, this becomes L p d by d and take delta p out. So, that whatever is within the bracket that becomes a non dimensional. So, L p delta p d by d becomes a non dimensional number and the whole thing in the first bracket becomes non dimensional P w becomes non dimensional. So, and this is valid for every x location because at every x location now my membrane surface concentration is, is varying. So, C m will be a function of x. So, P w will be it will be a function of x depending on the C m because delta pi is a sole function of C m that we have already seen earlier. So, P w will be nothing but a function of x and this becomes and this constant is known as uh, this, this another constant let us say this b 1. So, this becomes b 1 times 1 minus delta pi by delta p. Okay. Now, with this formulation one can one can calculate the value of membrane surface concentration at every x location and once you get the value of membrane surface concentration at every x location, you will be getting a value of membrane uh, the permeate concentration through the definition of real retention at every x location. You can integrate it over the length and can, can get the length average permeate concentration. Once you know the membrane surface concentration at every x location by using this expression, you can get the value of non dimensional permeate flux at every x location and can get and integrate it out using Simpson's one third rule or any rule to get the length average permeate flux. How we will do that? We will let us look into that algorithm. Okay. For calculation of 
permeate flux and permeate concentration. Let us say at a particular x location, particular extra location, let us say non dimensional, okay. guess the value of C m. Okay, guess the value of C m star. Step number 2 is to calculate P w from Darcy's law, that means from this equation P w is equal to B 1, 1 minus delta pi by delta p. Okay. B, what is B 1? B 1 is nothing but L p delta p d e by d. L p is known, d e is the geometric factor, delta p is the operating condition, d e is the diffusivity that is known. So, B 1 will be known delta p will be known in delta pi will be delta pi is basically a function of membrane surface concentration and real retention and uh, osmotic coefficients all these are known since you have guessed the value of cm star this can also be calculated so one can calculate pw from there now third is you calculate evaluate a1 from the equation P w 4 to the power 1 upon 3 Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3 x star raised to the power 1 upon 3. From this equation, you, we are talking about particular extra location. So, at that particular extra location, uh, you, have, you have already calculated P w, substitute that uh, Reynolds is known to you, Reynolds number is known to you, Smith number is known to you because, because basically the solute and solvent properties are known d by L as the geometric factors. So, you will be in a position to evaluate the value of A 1. Once you know the value of A 1, you can evaluate the definite integral I 1. Evaluate I, what is I if you remember is nothing but 0 to infinity minus eta cube by 3 minus A eta minus eta square right, now eta cube, eta cube by 3 minus A eta d eta. Now, A 1, this A 1 is known to you, so you just substitute there. So, there is nothing, everything is known in this expression. So, you put a value of uh, you know higher limit and evaluate the definite integral i. Once you evaluate the definite integral i, then evaluate C m star from the expression 1 minus a 1 times r r times i. Right? This was the expression of C m star from the boundary condition. Okay. So, I can evaluate C m star once again because A 1 is now estimated, real retention is known to you, I will be estimated from this. Now, compare the guess value of C m star and evaluated value of the C m star. Compare step number 1 with step number 5. Right, it is exponential, correct. It is exponential, does not matter. So, it, it, everything within the exponential, it will be known to you. So, uh, now, you compare compare C m star between calculated value and guess value and see whether this absolute value of C m star guess minus C m star calculated is less than epsilon or some small number, let us say 0 0.01 or something. Okay. And if not, then you calculate the, you, you, you have another guess of C m star and like that. So, that, that, that way you will be converging a value of C m star at a particular x loca extra location. Once you know the value of C m star, then you can evaluate delta pi at that particular x location because delta pi is a sole function of C m star. So, you can get from, you can go to the Darcy's law and can evaluate the value of permeate flux at that particular location. So, once C m star is known, P w is known from Darcy's law, Darcy's law expression. Once C m star is known, 
CP at that particular X location is also known. CP star is nothing but CM star into 1 minus real retention, it is known. So, that is also known. Once you determine all these quantities for that particular X location, then go to the next X location X plus delta X. In that case, the easiest way to solve it, the guess value should be the converged value in the previous step. Okay? So, at the next step X star plus delta X, you have a guess of C m star that was the converged value at the location x star and do the same and calculate this carry out this iteration and get a converged value of C m star. So, likewise what you can get? You can get a profile of C m star as a function of x star and C m star will always start from 1 because its lowest value is C naught. Okay? So, it starts from 1 and it will, it will go up like that your C p star will also follow the trend of C m star, but at a lower level because it is multiplied by 1 minus r r. r r will be typically 0 0.9, so it will be multiplied by 0 0.1. Okay? So, this is the profile of C m star as a function of x and this will be a profile of C p star as a function of x and the profile of p w will be reverse and this will be profile of p w as x star. Now, one can now our, our final aim is to find the value of P w and to get the estimate of permeate concentration. This gives, gives the productivity or the quantity, this gives the concentration or quality. So, therefore, you can do a length averaging by using Simpson's one third rule. Simpson's one third rule and can get a length averaged permeate flux or productivity of the process and length average permeate concentration and to, to, to estimate the system performance. Okay. Now, in this algorithm what this is this is a more or less, uh, so, so let us summarize whatever we have done. We have used the property of similarity transformation and reduced the governing partial differential equation into an ordinary differential equation. And from there all we, we got, got, got again you know a set of algebraic equation and at different x locations we can solve these, uh, these two expressions uh, you know um, iteratively set of equations iteratively and can get the estimate of system performance at a particular x location. We repeat this process at all the locations in the channel and can get the length variations of the desired quantities and then we again do a numerical integration to get the average flux. Now, there is a another shortcut method. So, this method, so, so we have already shortcut the whole method, right? From PD, we convert into OD and then we, we got the, um, uh, the method, but still there is substantial numerical stuff involved here. There is another shortcut method that I am going to describe you, which will uh, basically um, uh, require solution of two coupled nonlinear algebraic equation. Okay? that can be obtained by defining a Sherut number or length averaged mass transfer coefficient. So, let us, so we further simplify this calculation procedure and directly we get the direct evaluation of length average permeate flux. So, whatever we have done it is indirect evaluation, you first you get the profile of permeate flux and permeate concentration then do a length averaging by, by some numerical technique. Direct evaluation so, next we do a further simplification for direct evaluation of length averaged permeate flux. Okay, this bar represents the averaged and permeate concentration C p bar. Okay. Now, so we do the length averaging of expression of P w. So, P w will be length averaged means 0 to 1 P w x star d x star. So, that is the length averaging of permeate uh, uh, flux. So, this will be 4 to the power 1 upon 3 a 1 Reynolds Smith d by L raised to the power 1 upon 3 0 to 1 x star to the power minus 1 upon 3 d x star. Okay? And uh, this will be what? This will be nothing but a value of 1.5, right? minus 1 upon 3 plus 1. So, it will be 2 by 3. Uh, so, yeah, minus 1 upon 3 plus 1 
uh, divide, so this is 2 by 3, so this will be 2 by 3, so it will be 3 by 2, right? And when you put the limit, it becomes 1. So it is it, the whole integral becomes 1.5, correct? So if you do that, you will be getting 2.38 a1 Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3, okay? So we can write down the expression of a1 in terms of length average permeate flux. What is that? That will be nothing but 0.42 that is inverse of 2.38 Pw divided by Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3. And this Pw is nothing but this is a length average permeate flux and all these are operating conditions and the geometric factors all known to us. So we write down A1 as 0.42 lambda 1. What is lambda 1? Lambda 1 is nothing but Pw divided by Reynolds Smith d by l raised to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. So, uh, this becomes a suction parameter, right? We can we can assume that uh, the permeate flux is nothing but the porosity of the wall and the whole thing is being sucked out. Okay? So, this is also known as the suction parameter. Okay. So, let us evaluate now, let us look into the uh, I 1, the, the, the definite integral, this is 0 to infinity exponential minus eta cube by 3 minus 0 0.42 lambda 1 eta d eta. Okay. Once we know the value of lambda, we can evaluate the definite integral i. Now, let us look into the definition of mass transfer coefficient. The definition of mass transfer coefficient will be k, if you remember del c del y minus of that y at evaluated at y equal to 0 divided by c at y equal to 0 that is c m minus c at bulk that is c naught. Okay. This is the definition of mass transfer coefficient. Okay. Now, if you do that, what I what you should do, I can give you it is it is an assignment, you, you express del c del y in terms of d c star d eta and make it non-dimensional. So, this becomes c m star minus 1. Okay, because it is non-dimensional with respect to C naught. So, numerator, denominator becomes C m star minus 1, numerator you expressed in terms of d c star d eta and get the expression of d c star d eta from the solution, evaluate, evaluate it at y equal to 0 means at eta equal to 0 and, and see what you get. What you get? That means, after substituting del c del y in terms of d c star d eta and if you substitute that what you get is c m star minus 1 that is the new denominator it will it will be multiplied there minus d u 0 h x d raised to the power 1 upon 3 d c star d eta at eta equal to 0. right? this becomes this. Now, what we can do? You can look into the constants of integration that this and, and find out what is the value of d c star d eta. Okay. If you do that, then finally, the in fact, this, this becomes a, a constant of integration okay. and c m star is nothing but one of the constant of integration. So, this becomes k becomes minus k 1 divided by k 2 minus 1 into u 0 d square by h x raised to the power 1 upon 3. Okay. So, that gives directly an x and, and if you if you replace the value of k 1 and k 2, this k 1 by 1, uh, 1 over k 2 minus 1 will become minus 1 over i. Okay. Anyway, we will stop here in today's class, we will continue in the next class and uh, get the expression of mass transfer coefficient and see how it will simplify our course of calculations. Okay. Thank you.